Okay, so we are now going to have a look at um, the exercise 11 uh, of chapter, um, chapter 9, the ARIMA. Okay, can, can you see my R? Yeah, okay. So um, we, uh, I don't know, do, do you hear any background noise perhaps? Some, some noise? No, okay. No, no, I hear perfectly. That, that's good. Okay, uh, so the, the exercise uh, asks to choose one of the following seasonal time series the Australian uh, from the Australian production data set. Uh, uh, we can choose between electricity, cement, or gas. So I started with electricity just to see uh, what's in there. And so we load the library, FPP3. Uh, as soon as you load the library, you have the data set uh, available. So the data set uh, is uh, this, uh, this made of uh, some uh, interesting information about beers, tobacco, bricks, cement, electricity, and gas. And also the, the time uh, is in quarter. Okay. So now we uh, select the electricity. Uh, and so we have a nice uh, time series to use. Uh, we can see that uh, the range of the quarter, so the period of uh, this time series goes from the 1956 uh, first quarter to the 2010 second quarter. Okay, so in the exercise asks, do, do the data uh, need transforming? Okay. Um, Let's have a look uh, first thing. Uh, what is this uh, time series? How how is, is this uh, electricity uh, consumption um, behaves? Okay, so we use we uh, again select as before the electricity. Then we we drop some now in case there's any, and then we do auto plot, and then we add a smooth uh to to see um how it looks so this is the um the time series so as we told a lot about the, the on the in the previous weeks huh? so this is clearly not stationary okay and we can see that it's steady growing within time and there are some uh, seasonalities. Okay. Uh, so I had a look at the GG season using GG season. Uh, I can use the period year, and we can see that uh, within quarters. So this is the what's happened each year, basically. So. We can see that from, from the, the very bottom, which is the 1956, uh, uh, 56, to uh, 2010, okay? So the, uh, let's say consumption, yeah? The, the, the of, uh, electricity, uh, um, electricity demand uh, is really, uh, increase it. And so we can see that all these lines are the years, okay? We can see that there is a clear um, uh, re repetition within the years. So uh, the use of electricity within one uh, single year uh, as um, this, this um, uh this um how can, can i say trend so it starting going down a bit 
very slowly in the first quarter, then starting to grow within the second and the, uh, in the second quarter, and then uh, start decreasing uh, to the, the end of the year. So we have a peak uh, in quarter three. And this is something that it is uh, uh, can be clearly seen uh, that happened in the, within uh, all the previous years. The the, the most uh, clear uh, impact difference is, is is the increasing in demand, which is change. We just changed a lot. Okay. So and then I've just uh, pick two years like. 1960 and 2000. And so we can see that this is the 1960 demand lower than 10,000. And this is the 2000, which is uh, more than 50,000. 50, okay. But you can, uh, this is even, even a peak is, is, has increased um, within time. But more or less the, the trend. So the, the trend, uh, the it's 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 almost the same within all year. So, um, just a, a a little mention from from the book. So classical decomposition method assume that the seasonal component repeats from year to year. So for many series. This is a reasonable assumption, but for some longer series, this is not. Okay. For example, electricity demand patterns have uh, changed over time as air conditioning uh, has become widespread in many locations. The seasonal usage patterns from several, several decades ago had its maximum demand in winter due to eating why the current seasonal pattern has its maximum demand in summer due to air conditioning. So we already talked about that. And this is clearly, can be clearly seen here. Okay. Uh, so classical decomposition method might be not able to capture these seasonal changes over time. So this is something that to, to keep in mind. So are data uh, stationary? Uh, I did, the, the first uh, thing I did, I did the difference. Okay, so I mutate the electricity uh, with the difference function. And then uh, did the auto plot. So we can see that from here, from this one here, we now have uh, a centered zero uh, stationary uh, time series. Is that right? Okay. Um, so, and then I've made two plots with the uh, autocorrelation just to see the lags. Okay, one uh, just uh, without the, so just as is. And the other one with the difference. And so we can see that uh, as, we, the, as, as the same as Google uh, the data set, we have lots of lags. And even differencing, there's still many. So I, I had difficulties. I have difficulties in understanding what I supposed to do. Yeah, because with... remember that you have two uh, uh, two factors that are affecting the stationary, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, presumption. One is the trend, okay, which you can uh, you can get rid of it with a difference from the from the from the value and the previous value, okay, difference of one. Mm -hmm. But then you have also seasonality here. So you have to first get rid of the seasonality. Okay. So the difference that you need there, apart from the difference of one, is difference, but this time of four. 
because you okay. have four periods per yeah. per year, right? A yeah. quarter. So yeah. if you apply difference four, okay, and then apply the difference, okay, uh -huh. again, okay, two, uh -huh. two, two, two differences, one for the seasonality and one for the trend, then uh -huh. probably you will get a stationary uh, time series. Okay. So you have to apply uh, two times uh, the difference. Okay. Let, let's have a look at uh, this. Yeah, there, uh, if you want, uh, go, go to the first, to the plot, to the first plot. Which one? The, the, the one in another SCF, no, the, the one that you apply difference and then apply the other plot. And there, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, go 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 to the script, go to the code. Okay, there in okay. the difference, you're going to say difference and the period, the period is going to be four, the period. No, not the differences, the period. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that's a parameter of order, exactly. Order. Yes. Okay. okay. And uh, then yeah. you're going to do another mutation of the electricity, right? Of four, and you're going to do another difference. Okay, I'm going to put this down uh, here. Okay, so I did order by four, and mm -hmm. then yeah, check 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 that first if if it's okay. if it's worth. Okay, order must be size, uh, size one, order by four. Okay, let me check here. Now, for me, it's difference because the difference is the parameter. Let, Dif let's... Okay, yeah, you, you use differences, yeah. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you still have, right? You still have that uh, uh, variation, right? Mm hmm okay. That's seasonality variation. So now what you have to do is uh, go again to the code, and then you're going to apply another another difference, okay? okay? So you apply the first difference, which is for the seasonality, and then you're going to apply another one. Okay. okay. Another one there, you can say comma after, after four, no, not after four, after that parenthesis. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. You're going to put then electricity again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Equal uh, difference. Uh, electricity. Electricity. And that's it. Uh, yeah. And that should make it uh, stationary. So one is for the season, the other one is for the 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 the, the, the values you know preceding. Ah, okay, the okay, I understand. So basically, okay. the fir the first modification is difference with a differencing for for the seasonal seasonality. Yeah. Yeah, and then I make a fourth difference mm -hmm. on on that thing. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's see how how it how it goes. Okay. The problem here, what, what, the, the only problem here is that the variance is not uniform, okay? Uh -huh. So before doing those differences, you have to do a transformation. Okay. Okay? So probably the best way will be before the differencing, uh, do a log, a log on, on electricity. Okay, okay. So in that, in that mutate, uh, and that mutate yeah. uh, equation exactly. Put electricity, right? And then equal log electricity. Yes. Oh okay. no. Let, I, let's I, see how how, how we how we. I didn't want to do that. Sorry. Sorry about that. Okay. Yes. Otherwise, we miss information. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Now, uh, probably that will qualify as a stationary uh, time series. You have to do the test, the KPSS okay. test, okay, to make sure that what you're seeing is corroborated with the statistical test. 
Right. Okay. okay. Let's go forward and see. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but you, you see now yeah. that more or less, you know, it's centered, the virus is uniform, okay? And, you know, there's up and downs, but they're not the up and downs of a seasonality. They're more random here, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what if, uh, I don't know if you, is there any difference if I do log 10? Uh, usually we do, we use the natural, the natural okay. logarithm. Okay. 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 Uh, you can, you could use it. You could use a lot 10. Uh, but uh, the, the, the norm is that we use the natural, the, you know, the E, the E, uh, uh, uh base. Okay. But it's easier. It's easier to, to, to change with the exponent, because if you use log 10, then you have to, you know, trans, uh, inverse the transformation with that 10 base. Okay. Uh, with the with the functions in R, it's easier because log is already the natural logarithm, and exp the exponential is the inverse function of the log. Okay. You don't have to add any anything else. Okay. So now. Uh... Okay. Now uh, check that you know that transformation and those differences with the ACF. Okay. Uh... Which, uh, uh, okay. Yeah, the, the, the one that we did, that one, that one, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah I, I use that, but uh, mm, so just the uh, ACF electricity. Exactly. So you have to do the, the transformation, the seasonal differencing, and the, and the simple differencing. And I use this. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm. Okay. okay. Uh, you still have some lags there. Yeah. Right. Okay. So let, let me check. Let me check again. Uh, let me check upstairs. Uh, okay. Electricity. Let me check. Uh, okay. Because you're using. Okay. Uh, I what's happening is that yeah. you're inputting electricity there. Let me see. Okay. ACF. ACF. Electricity. Uh, okay. Yeah, because you still have lags. Is it, they're supposed to be between those uh, dotted lines? Okay. Uh -huh. So we still have some lags that we have to, you know, figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. ACF. Okay. You applied the ACF. You applied the auto plot. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Instead, if I use this, uh, um, mm -hmm. Yam box. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, then... you get a value of zero. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so you know, it's it's not it's not you know you are rejecting the no hypothesis. Okay? okay. Okay. Let me check something. Okay. Let Let's go for uh, because I've uh, uh, okay. I have more than we. So basically, then mm -hmm. what I did is transforming uh, this in log as we did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then did the difference of four. Right. We did it. And then did the difference of the difference of the log uh, to one. Okay. To one. And yeah. so we can see all of them in one plot. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the first um, without transformation. This is with the log. Mm -hmm. This is with the first differencing. Right. 
but uh, with the log difference of lo of the log and four. Mm -hmm. So what we just did it, which is this one here. Mm -hmm. Should be this one. Um, yeah, that that looks better. That one, yeah. the, the, the last, you know, the last plot. Yeah. Okay. And so this maybe one... what you could do then, you know, apply that to the to the ACF. Okay. 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 So. Yeah, it will, it will be that last one. The last one. Mm -hmm. Okay, are you okay, so electricity is going to be equal to the difference of the difference of the log electricity for one? Uh -huh. Okay, and you apply that to ACF and you should get the lags within those dotted lines. Uh -huh. okay. okay, I use this. Mm -hmm. uh, mutate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. ACF. Okay. okay. And then the auto plot. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, so we still have some lags. Okay, but that's okay because most of them are within that are uh, you know th th those uh, confidence intervals, and that's what you want. That mm -hmm. that's a measure of that. You know those lags are not significant. The only ones that are you know spiking are lag one and lag four. Okay. Yeah. So we, we could use that as a stationary time series. And if you do the KPSS test uh, and the value is more than 0 0.05, the p-value more than 0 0.05, then you know your no hypothesis is you know it's not rejected. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. So I the the KPSS value mm -hmm. uh on uh, basis. So uh, yeah, the, that, that's the original time series, the, correct? Yes. Yeah, the original is uh, the, the the very uh, lowest level ever, mm -hmm. uh, and so this means that the new level this is is rejected, and so data is not stationary, but right. yep. and under these assumptions, but then with differencing, um, we can see that things change it. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, change it on the other side. So this is the maximum level, and it, it can be even uh, higher. Okay, try, uh, Federica, try with that, you know, log, log and difference. Yeah. Okay. I bet you that they that KPSP value is going to go up. Okay. Uh, yeah, try, try with the with the log, which uniforms the variance, and also with the seasonal differencing and the regular, you know, the the simple differences. Mm -hmm. See the maximum level. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. But now we're sure, visually, we're sure that you know that the that, okay. that, the, that, that the series is stationary. Okay. Okay. So then there is this uh, other um, not the, the KPSS, but the NDIF. Mm -hmm. uh, so on the original data, uh, it's one. So indicating mm -hmm. that uh, seasonal difference is required, in fact. Okay, so 
uh, then uh, the exercise has uh, to try some different uh, um, mm -hmm. which of um, it, to identify a couple of uh, ARIMA models. Right. Okay, and according to uh, what are what is the best uh, AIC values. Uh, but uh, I think I missed something, uh, and uh, we can. Ah, okay, because I um, we, I did this after with mm -hmm. pa, with this. Uh, this is uh, with capital letters, so this is for mm -hmm. partial the partial uh, ACF. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we can see that we just with the difference, uh, we have few lags, but even there's some things. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. But uh, okay, I've, I've tried the first model just as is. Um, Arima uh, one zero one, mm -hmm. and then one one two. Yeah, period four with drift. Okay. Okay. So what what is saying there is that the the middle parameter for the first parenthesis, the middle parameter says that there's no need for differencing. Uh huh. Uh, you know the the simple differencing, the the the, the one and the, the 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 value and the previous value, but then it says that in the seasonally, yes, you need a differencing. So okay. it's only applying at order one, and it's on the seasonal. Mm hmm. Okay, and that's the model that the Orwarima found that is the most, you know, is the optimal model. Okay. Okay. Okay, so the the AIC mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, three thousand. Right. Um, four hundred. Well, yeah, I remember that you want to minimize. So if you are comparing different Arima models for the same time series. What you want to do is look at the AIC corrected, the one that is in the middle, and try to minimize that. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes Aurorima does a good job, but sometimes it doesn't. Because remember, the state space model that is, you know, is uh is constrained, you know, to a set of uh of 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 of, of a chunk of that space. Okay. Yeah. It is it, not going to do everything. Okay. Uh, then use this model to do a forecast of 10 uh, following uh, periods. Mm -hmm. And we can see uh, this nice forecast, which is um, showing even the confidence intervals. Mm -hmm. uh, then I tried uh, to see the partial uh, autocorrelation uh as i said only on difference differencing um and so i found these values so these lags and use an arima with four mm -hmm. here now i have uh an aic centered of uh, 3,400. You have to compare it with the auto Riemann. Okay. So the Aurorima is still the best model. Yeah. Still. Okay. But we could try, you know, we could try different models. For example, we could try the one that is uh, uh, the one that Aurorima uh, found okay upstairs. Uh, go go to Aurorima. Okay, we could try uh, to get that parameter zero, the d equals zero instead d equal one. Okay, right there, and see what is the effect. In, instead of the four zero zero, put one one one. One one one. Yeah. Uh, and let, let's see, let's, let's experiment. What happens? Okay. Yeah, uh, they are a one, one, one.
to to change the thing, I, I need to PDQ, put that. PDQ. But uh, in one one one. Ah, okay. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. One one one. Okay. Okay. Check it out. Ah, look at that. Okay, that's uh, AIC less than the auto rima. So just doing that differencing that the aura rima couldn't catch, doing that differencing in the values per se, uh, gives you, according to AIC, it gives you a better model. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay, so yeah. I leave it to you. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, so the 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 exercise that I uh, uh, that I uh, work uh, was this one, the eleven dot seven. Okay, uh, which is related to the passengers. This one. Okay, the Australian passengers, total number of passengers in millions from this period, 1970 to 2011. Uh, they're no carriers, just the, the, the year and the total of, of passengers that, you know, uh, were, you know, were, were, were in transit. Okay, so let's see, because there were some interesting, you know, uh, questions here. Okay, so we have, right, the uh the the Siebel, right which is the the year so the 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 period the period here is is year right and then the total passengers but this number is in millions so 7.32 is going to be 7 million 320 thousand and so forth okay so the first thing uh plot the time series right to see if our you know just visually if our series is stationary or not stationary and we know already if we have if he has a trend that is going to be non-stationary, right? Okay. And this one has a you know an increasing trend, monotonic, in, in, in fact. So just for doing the you know the 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 process, we are going to do the KPSS test, you know, to make sure that it's uh is uh non-stationary, right? And the p-value is 0 0.01. So that means that we reject the no hypothesis that the time series stationary in favor of the uh, alternate, which is not stationary. So what are, you what are you going to do? So one of the things that we can do is apply a difference, right? The first difference, because there's some seasonality here. So we're not going to do any seasonality difference. It's just the trend that we have to correct. So if we do that, apply difference of the first order, the equal one, uh, we we have this, okay? And what you want is that that time series undulates or fluctuates around zero. In other words, it has it has a mean zero, okay? Uh, here you can see that most of the of of the values are above uh, zero. So to correct that, because it's still stationary, it has a trend, in other words, it's still stationary, we're going to apply another uh, difference, okay? So it's going to be difference D equal two now, okay? So we're going to apply the first difference, and then we're going to apply another difference on top of that difference, okay? And when we do that, we get this. And now our time series is center, right? The mean is center, uh, at zero, a value. So there's no trend. And of course, you know, we know that there's no seasonality. All right. So if we apply again the KPS test to this difference of two, of order two, okay, now we get the KPS value 0.1, which is what we want uh, to make sure that the time series is stationary. Okay. So the first question uh, use ARIMA. Capital letters ARIMA, and that's very important because in these packages, there are different, you know, different functions for ARIMA, and it's kind of confusing sometimes. Okay, so the ARIMA that we're studying here is capital letters ARIMA, 
<laughs> okay. So that, that, that's the one that is going to, without any parameters, is going to do the auto array uh, function. All right. So let's feed it, right? Our, our uh, passengers, let's feed it to the model. And let's do the report, which is like a summary for the regression. Uh, here is report. Okay. And the report says that the optimum model that the auto rima found was uh, AR0. In other words, no AR component. Difference two, like you know, we had in our, you know, when we do the KPS test, and then moving average of the errors as one. So we have no AR, we have difference two, and then we have MA1. Okay, and that's the optimus. And this is the, the number for the AIC corrected. All right. If we apply tidy, we're going to get uh some interesting, you know, uh, information from the coefficients of the formula. So the only coefficient that we have is MA1, a moving average one. And this is going to be the estimate. This is the statistic, and this is the p-value. So it gives you another uh, piece of information that that coefficient is significant, all right? In other words, the probability that is zero uh, is very is, is very low. Okay, something that in the report you don't see. All right. And let's check the residuals for that ARIMA to see if the residuals are validating uh, the model. So here we see, and we see a random pattern, right, for the residuals. Okay. We see that the lags are within the confidence intervals. So that's, that's good. And that even there are some outliers, but you know, the, the, the history and the distribution of those residuals are, you know, are Gaussian, uh, normalized. Okay, so we are, you know, in that sense, you know, this model is a good model. Let's do the forecast for the next 10 years using that Aurora So this is the forecast, all right? Of course, now we can go back because this data only goes to 2011. We can go back now and say that this forecast eventually, because of COVID, is going to be, uh, is not going to forecast very well. Okay. Maybe it's going to forecast until the beginning of COVID, but during the COVID pandemic, no model, you know, could predict that. All right. So, but, you know, it's something that we have to, we have to be conscious about it. Okay. So the second question is, okay, uh, this was the, the back shift operator. Okay, so let me see. I think, I don't know if I did it or not. Uh, I have it somewhere. Uh, the back shift operator is the one, this formula. Okay, uh, this type of formula that, uh, you know, puts in mathematical notation the, the RIMA model that we are, you know, we're dealing with it. And it's going to have this kind of component, you know, the, the B, the B, capital B square, because we have two differences, you know, an order of two. So it's going to have that. So eventually, maybe I'll post it, but I know that somewhere, you know, I did some, you know, some magic there. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's go to C. Let's go to C. And in C, it says plot forecast from ARIMA model with 0, 1, 0. In other words, no AR model, no MA model, but then uh, a difference of one. And we're going to add a drift, okay? A drift, a, a, dr a drift term. All right, so how we do that? See, here how, how, how we're doing it. We're going to say Arima the same the same thing that we did with the with the with the first model the Arima dot Arima. Now we're going to say that we're going to input manually those PDQ terms, which are the zero one zero, right? And then we're going to add one, okay? Which is the C the constant one plus the PDQ. So that that activates in that in that formula that activates uh, the constant, okay? So when we do that. We fit the model and then we report it. Uh, we get, remember that there's no AR, there is no uh, MA, 
And there is only one difference. Of course, because we are at a constant, there's going to be a drift, okay? What is called a drift. And the only uh, component of this formula is the constant, right? And the AICC is going to be 200, which is a little bit higher than the Aurora So still the Aurora is giving us the best model so far. So let's plot this one with the, with the uh, future uh, period of 10 years. And then we see something a little bit uh, interesting is that this is our first uh, forecast, right? So it goes basically, you know, uh, 45 or kind of a 45 uh, degree angle, okay, the, the slope. In this model, in the drift model, the slope is a little bit less steep, okay? So in other words, it's less optimistic than the Aurorima. The Aurorima, you know, just goes, you know, straight, straight, straight forward, like a rocket. And here, there's a little bit of less, you know, steepness in that, in that slope, all right? Then, num, uh, C, it says, plot now, uh, excuse me, D, plot, Forecast for an arena model, but now instead of 0, 1, 0, we're going to input 2, 1, 2, okay, with drift and compare with the Aurorima and also with the 0, 1, 0. All right, so let's do that. We're going to do the same model like the second one, but instead of 0, 1, 0, we're going to activate now the AR and the MA with uh, two lags, okay, two lags for the AR and two lags for the errors. All right. So let's see how we do. Okay. And we see that now we have, you know, more coefficients. We have the constant. And, but still, the AIC uh, corrected, the corrected AIC is still higher than the previous two models that we, uh, that we fit. Um, sorry. Are you mm -hmm. sh sharing um, the no, screen? You... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. Why? Yeah, it says you are screen sharing. Yeah, yeah, you're sharing the 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 book page. Is that right? Uh, okay, the book page is here. Yeah, I see the, just the book page. Okay, let me stop. Okay, let me let me go back here. Okay, can you see the the R screen? Yes, and okay. now I see. Okay, so now we have, we activated the R component, the auto regressive component and the MA with uh, two lags and two lags for the errors. Okay, and we got this, but still the AIC corrected is higher. And you know, in other words, our model is getting worse. <laughs> okay, and if you do the tidy, right? The tidy, you will get, you know, the significance and more information about those uh, coefficients for the formula. Then let's plot again the the forecast for the next uh, ten periods, next ten years. And this is the, you know, the result. So now, instead of this straight line that we have here with the drift model, now we have like a wiggly line now, okay? So there is a random, you know, component there that it was introduced when we activated the AR and the MA, comparing with the ones that they don't, they don't have that, okay? Because the difference is the same, is one. The only thing that we change is activating the, the AR, activating the MA, all right? Okay, now... <laughs> Here is something that, you know, I had to had to do some research here. It says, remove the constant and see what happens. Okay, there are two ways that I found to remove the constant from the formula. The first one is to get rid of that one. Okay, we're, we're saying passengers uh, explain as one plus uh, PDQ, right? So if we take that plus one, we're telling the model that we don't have, we don't want any constant, but there's a problem. 
or we run, we try to run the, that, it will give me an error. In, in fact, it will give me a warning, but it will give me an error because the model cannot converge, okay? The model cannot converge without that constant. And what it's saying is that the model needs that constant because of the stationarity uh, assumption, okay? Because we're dealing with stationarity, we need that constant, all right? That was the first, you know, uh, uh, you know, the first possibility. The other one that I had to, you know, research a little bit, and is from this uh, article from the author uh, Hyman. Okay, right here. Constants and RBA models. I don't, up, I don't right? see it. I don't see it. You don't see it? Okay, let me stop share. Uh, apparently, when I change the screen, it doesn't change there. Okay, let me see. Can you see now? Can you see the article, uh, Federica? Okay, constants and ARIMA models. So here he's explaining the different functions to run an ARIMA model in R, okay? There is an ARIMA, lowercase, okay? There is another ARIMA with A as, as capital A and then lowercase. And of course, the one that we're using, which is all capitals. What happens is that they come from different uh, sources, okay? The capital ARIMA comes from Fable uh, package, which is the one that we're, we're, we're really using in the text. The other ARIMA that he mentions, which is the capital A and then lowercase, right? Like a, like a normal, you know, a word. This comes from the forecast package, okay? And this function has some arguments that you can tell if you're going to include a constant or not, okay? And then we have the ARIMA lowercase, which is the one that comes with the stats package, which is a base package from R. So we have three packages that gives you three flavors of the same function, <laughs> all right? So why is that you know, important? Because I wanted to make sure that I was doing it right, right? You know, when I took out that constant in the capital ARIMA, uh, I, was, I was trying to see if I could get a second opinion with another function if it did the same thing. And what I did was uh, call that uh, ARIMA with capital A from the forecast package, okay? But here you need to transform your Sable into a TS uh, object, okay? Into a time series object. So that's why the, the, the data set has been a pipe to the ASTS, which is as time series, okay? Because forecast works, doesn't work with tables, it works with uh, time series objects. So now we have the, the ARIMA, okay, model 212, and then we're going to say in, in include contents, false, all right? Okay, so that will get rid of the constant. So what happens when you try to run, boom, error. <laughs> I cannot compute this without the constant, in other words, okay? If I go uh, through here. Uh, I don't see it. I don't, you don't see, see it. it? I see okay. still the, it, maybe you, you need to share uh, the, the, the screen, not just a page. Yeah, let mm -hmm. me see. M maybe it's this. Can you see this? Yeah, now I see it. Okay, yeah, I, I think that's the that's the trick here. Okay, okay. So if I put this uh, function with the include dot constant as true, then let's see what happens. Now we're mm -hmm. getting the same result. <laughs> okay, so some ARIMA models they're going to give you an error when they need that constant that C activated. Okay, because Internally, they cannot, you know, compute the, you know, the metrics, and they cannot resolve, you know, the, the equation. Okay, and I think that basically that's what the author wanted us to, you know, to find out. Okay, so, but I had to go, you know, uh, you know, uh, jumping up a couple of hoops, you know, to try to see, you know, what's going, what was going on. Okay, so 
Let me see. And what what the auto arima does? What the auto? Let me okay. Let me share this. Okay, the auto arima. You you mean this one, right? Uh, uh I I cannot hear you right now. <laughs> I lost you. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I was mute. Okay. So, auto uh, arima is the same as arima capital letter without any other specifications. Correct. Yes, the arima of fable calls the auto arima of forecast. That's is the same function. The only thing that they are you know the 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 they are called different in different packages. But it's basically the same function. Okay. Okay. So let me go back. Uh, okay. Let me go back here. All right. So the last question was to plot the forecast for an ARIMA 0 to 1 model with a constant, right? That's the, that's the last question. So here is easy, right? You get the RIMA, you get the PDQ, uh, zero to one, right? And then you add the one plus to activate the constant. That, that, is, that is the same as include constant in the other function. So we ran this, right? And then we do the report. And as you can see, this model in particular, the PDQ zero to one with a constant, uh, has a lower AICC than the auto ring. <laughs> okay, so if we keep iterating, you know, with the with the AACF, the PACF, and trying to find out, eventually we could get some models that are better than the auto ring. Okay, and if you go a tidy here, right? If you go a tidy, you see that those coefficients from the constant and from the MA one they are significant. And this is the, the forecast, the, the final forecast, okay? All right, but yeah, but it, it gave me a little bit of, uh, you know, headache, that, that constant, because you don't see it. You don't see it in the, you know, in the, in, in the examples, you know, from the textbook, you don't see that, you don't see that constant, okay? You know, the, the model automatically, you know, assumes Depending on the on the parameters, it assumes that it's going to have a constant or not. But you can force it, you know, to have the constant. Okay. Okay, so that is a, a wrap up. Let me let me stop the screen. Let me put here stop.